Meet Timmy. He spends hours on simple AI projects that everyone else built years ago. Tons of effort, but not much impact. This is Peter. He builds cool projects that actually matter. The kinds of projects that get you noticed by recruiters and eventually lead to offers. See the difference? All right, let's get straight to it. You want AI projects that actually get you hired. So let's skip the classroom fluff and go over three projects that most people never build. When I I was in school, I interned at Amazon making over $80 an hour, and the day I graduated, I landed a new grad offer paying over $240,000 a year, changing my life and my family's life forever. But what I'm most proud of are the thousands of students that I've helped land their dream offer in AI engineering. You see, the old playbook of getting a degree and building some generic projects just doesn't work anymore. Companies want proof that you're going to be able to do the work on the job. So building standout projects is the key. Let's go over three projects that can seriously boost your career. We're not talking surface level projects. And if you want the full plan to landing your dream internship and full-time offer, check out our accelerator linked in the description. Let's build an AI that can see a picture and write a detailed description. One, two, maybe even three sentences. If it sees a photo of a cat on a couch, it might spit out the string, a small orange cat is curled up on a blue sofa. Here's why this project stands out. First, it combines computer vision or CV with natural language processing or NLP, two major subfields of AI. Second, there is real world impact here. This project could help the visually impaired. Imagine a blind person using glasses that have this model loaded onto the device and the model reading out everything that is visible. This project also uses advanced deep learning models or neural networks, CNNs, RNNs, or even transformers. If you're not familiar with those, don't worry. I promise they're pretty easy to get up to speed with. But most importantly, this project lets you get creative with the output. You can generate more than just basic captions. You can train your model to generate extremely descriptive scenarios. Here's a simplified strategy for how to build this project. First, you need a data data set which maps thousands or tens of thousands of images with a corresponding caption. We're going to train the model to generate those captions based on the input images. The MS Coco data set is a great free option. Next, use a pre-trained CNN or convolutional neural network. The point of the CNN is to extract out the meaningful features from the images. Then we'll feed those features into another model like an RNN or a transformer so that we can actually generate the text one word at a time. We'll train the whole system end to end so that we can generate captions from images. Ultimately, we'll evaluate our model with a metric like the blue score instead of something basic like accuracy, which would be great to highlight on your resume. But why is this a top tier project? Well, first, you won't just be identifying objects and classifying them. Your model will actually interpret and explain what's going on on in an image. And next, this project proves that you can work with multimodal data and even advanced pipelines, which will look great if you're applying to AI engineering positions. Okay, what is model distillation? I promise it's not that complicated. We're going to start off with a super large model, which is really accurate, but unfortunately a bit slow and use that model to train or teach a much smaller, more efficient model. And ultimately, we'll try to get the smaller, more efficient model to say 90% of the accuracy of the bigger model. It's like a teacher training a student. That's the inspiration for distillation. So why does this project stand out? Well, first, it has huge real-world application. If we want to deploy a neural network or some other kind of model to an iPhone or an edge device, we'll often use distillation. That's because a large model would be way too inefficient to run on these smaller devices. This shows that you understand efficiency and deployment constraints, which is of course key to AI engineering. It also demonstrates a deeper understanding of knowledge transfer, as well as your ability to experiment and optimize Again, key skills for engineering. Here's a simplified plan for how to build it. 
First, choose a large pre-trained model. This might be BERT or ResNet. Again, don't worry if you're not familiar with these. Then you'll ultimately end up with a smaller model like Distill BERT or MobileNet. Again, these are much smaller models that can be deployed to devices like phones. You'll train the small model using first the actual labels from whatever data set you're using, but also the outputs from the larger model. We're going to train the small model to mimic the outputs from the larger model. Then you'll wanna compare the performance of two different models. First, the student versus the teacher, right? Can the student achieve performance that's pretty close to the teacher? Then compare the student model to the baseline model before we actually did any training or distillation. If you wanna make this project even more detailed, experiment with different student models and training techniques. Okay, why is this a top tier project? Because trust me, this one is. Well, first and foremost, it shows practical thinking, right? It shows that you can use AI in practical environments ones where we have limitations on how much compute is available. It also balances performance and efficiency, two key trade-offs in every industry application. Think of this like AI with a library card. We want an AI that doesn't just memorize information, but can look up relevant facts before generating the answer. This lets the model access way more information than whatever was in the original training data. The model searches some sort of database for the answer to our question and then generates a concise short response, which is exactly what we want. It's literally like giving ChatGPT access to a giant library. Okay, here's why RAG projects stand out. First, they solve a key limitation of LLMs, hallucination and outdated information. You might remember older versions of ChatGPT. If you asked a recent question, it might say something like, sorry, I don't have this information based on my last knowledge update. Thankfully, that's not an information anymore, partly due to RAG. Next, this project merges information retrieval and text generation, two key workflows in LLMs. And finally, RAG is extremely relevant for AI that can stay up to date with the latest information, read real world documents, and has applications in customer service, legal, medical, Q&A, the applications are endless. Okay, here's a simplified plan for how to build this project. Okay, first, choose your knowledge base. What information do you want to give to the LLM? Compile a bunch of documents, articles, PDFs that you have stored on your laptop. We're going to let the LLM access these. Next, use an open source model to generate embeddings for these documents. Here's the simplest way we can think about that. For our documents, we're going to convert those into vectors which encode the meaning of the documents. We're then going to store those vectors into some sort of searchable vector database. There's a ton of free open source options. Then when a user asks a question to our LLM, we'll turn that question into another vector and search the database for similar vectors. That's how we'll find the similar documents or chunks from the articles that will actually help answer the question. Then our workflow will paste whatever retrieved documents we found into the process prompt for the LLM and say something like, use these documents that I've pasted here to answer the original question from the user. And then the LLM will generate a very concise response, which is exactly what we want. But of course, we want to evaluate if the answer is actually accurate or relevant to what the user asked. Definitely experiment with different retrieval methods and prompting strategies. And let me just reemphasize one more time why RAG is a top tier project. Well, first it shows you can work with hybrid AI systems, but more importantly, it demonstrates that you can work with retrieval models, embedding models, and overall orchestration, which is critical for AI engineering. Okay, what are your next steps? Pick one of these projects, just one of them that seems most interesting to you and start building. The most important part is to document your process and share your results publicly on your GitHub profile and your LinkedIn account. And of course, be able to explain the project in an interview. If you want a full plan to building these exact three projects, check out our accelerator linked in the description. We've helped thousands of students land their dream role in AI engineering. We even have a full 
money back guarantee. I've never seen anything like this before. And if you're looking for another video, check out this video on how much math you really need for AI and machine learning. Based on these projects, you might be thinking that you need a ton of math before you can build these projects. My friend, that could not be further from the truth. So check out this video. You don't want to miss it. And I'll see you in the next one.